Hi all, I had quite a tough uh, club match last night. Uh, it wasn't against um, such a bad player. Rank 7 on the ECF rankings, uh, Jonathan Hawkins, a grandmaster, former British champion. Uh, Hendon Cheska were dominating, uh, absolutely dominated uh, the Middlesex League this year. They absolutely massacred, uh, for example, King's Head on the 26th of February. Uh, seven one, and in that match they brought Jim Jack on gear uh, Vakidov, who they also brought last night, but they also brought Jonathan Hawkins as well. So two GMs, and we did, overall we actually ended up doing better than King's Head. We scored more than I think we scored two and a half in the eight board match. So that was pretty good going. Anyway, here's my game on board one. I was white against Jonathan Hawkins. Uh, we initially actually got the colours wrong and we played this friendly game to start off with. Well, with him being white, we played a friendly, just for the record, D4. I tried, I was going to play this uh, Shaq Benoni. Um, E5, E4, D6. So this is just a friendly, just for the record. And then it, we were told we were playing the wrong colours. So yeah, game two. So I already scored half a point there, unofficially. <laughs> so game two. No, so this is where the fun begins. E4. I'm white. E5. We have knight f3, knight c6. Bishop b5, a6. I haven't gone crazy so far. I think this is still, it's a reasonable position, the old Stein variation. D4, G6. Yeah, Bishop G5. I thought to try and provoke some weaknesses on this diagonal if I can provoke him to play F6, but he did. But it does mean that Knight H6 to F7 is possible, which he plays. And it um, it threatens Knight G4, so I've got to parry that. The Knight goes back to F7. So Black's actually got... A, a position that I'd like to play, play as well quite often, sort of King's Indian style. I thought because it's King's Indian style, sometimes Black doesn't like the light square bishop being exchanged off. So I thought I should try for this d5 and take this bishop off and then sort of play it as though it's I'm on the white side of a King's Indian defense. So here I, f I think still I'm okay. Knight c3, c5, but now I go a bit crazy. Some some theoretical downsides start creeping in. I think against the GM, like the seventh number seven in the country, I don't think you want theoretical downsides creeping into the play. So uh on the other hand, I thought if I just play for example to Castle Queenside, he's gonna have B five here and maybe I can weather the storm a little bit. I have got a space advantage here. I mean, maybe it's not entirely bad. This this looks like still a sort of maybe a, a potentially playable position, maybe better than the game continuation. So I went a bit crazy in the game, trying to spice things up, which maybe is unnecessary. He didn't expect this move. <laughs> C takes B, knight A4, so threatening knight B6, but that's parried here with knight C8. So I thought this looks kind of dangerous c5 but he exploits like an achilles hill of this whole thing i've just given the b5 square he actually plonks his queen on b5 queen b3 and f5 he doesn't mind well he's trying to break my center as well rook c1 castles and he was hoping i wouldn't play this this is a reasonable move i think so far a5 now um I think I do get in potentially uh, trouble with A3. That's interesting. Um, uh, we did analyze that a bit, and you know, black ends up, it seems, being better in the variations anyway. Uh, I cast, uh, no, I don't cast, yes, I do castle, <laughs> yes, castle, D takes C5, rook takes, and for a moment I thought, oh, my rook's good, you know, rook on the seventh. The, f the thing is, actually the queen bouncing on this side of the board it can actually come and bounce on this side of the board i didn't really anti anticipate any of this pressure with this queen coming on this side of the ball there and we see actually he's sort of damaged this knight it's decentralized and he sort of damages this knight soon uh even, even though i get sort of impressive rooks for a moment it seems from an engine point of view i must play rook c2 here must to create that parking space 
to get the the Achilles heel of his position is e6, and apparently even at move twenty two here, white has a small edge now. For, from I'm talking from an engine point of view, if I can get into c5, I should have done this. For some reason, uh, I thought it was attractive just to routinely double rooks, so that's that's not very good. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to make sure my knight isn't totally killed. So giving the knight c5 is very very important here. And I, I think I start to go really downhill after this point because I didn't play rook c2. Rook c2, yeah, would be interesting. It's it's interesting, uh, rook c2 because it still can help prepare double rooks, uh, but it just must must respect this knight. I didn't respect this knight on a4. Now after this, yes, he just kills my knight. It's almost like playing a piece down. And now, unfortunately, he takes here and protects e4. And he's going to sort of kill this one as well now because I'm not going to be able to get e4 back because now the queen's coming in to hold e4. So he's two pawns up. And both my knights are pretty passive here. Uh, queen c2. I, I just can't, I, unless I play g3, I have to give up this pawn for that pawn. I didn't really want to play g3 necessarily. Um, rook a8. Uh, a fun aspect of recreating this game, by the way, is this kind of creates a potential weakness on f7 it wasn't played but let me just show you a fantasy variation <laughs> with, with the wrong rook uh, sorry uh, knight takes e4 rook takes this this didn't happen because it's that that f7 is protected can you see what white could play in this position so th this this I was getting excited in my postmortem analysis when I realized I just used the wrong rook to recreate the game but can you see in this position what white can play if I give you five seconds uh, starting from now? Okay, rook takes f7. I thought, how did I miss this opportunity? This would have been really cool. Because, <laughs> yeah, it sort of means that I can sort of win the queen potentially after this continuation g4. That check protects h3 how did i how did i miss that <laughs> I, was, I was thinking oh there are all these opportunities that i missed and i realized okay it's the wrong rook it's the wrong rook no he was actually pretty solid <laughs> he was much more solid than that unfortunately he used actually this uh a rook yes much better to use the a rook uh so anyway knight d1 yeah both these knights have been struggling in this game and the queen side knight because of that losing that pawn and this one because of losing that pawn that's quite funny and ironic actually so losing the pawns killed both my knights in this game knight f5 queen takes and now the thing is he's blasting down the d file uh that would be a blunder bishop h oh sorry knight takes e4 bishop d2 yeah this is pretty desperate because knight b2 a4 and not only is this knight killed but it's also actually going to be killed with a3 as well taken off the board so um this is already lost now this will be good because of knight f6 but unfortunately he spotted that rook d4 for a moment i thought hang on is he underestimating knight f2 not really bishop h6 now g4 it's pretty downhill now yeah the rest of the game is uh i i, I lose a piece now after knight e3 that's a ter that's a blunder in a lost position and here I'm I'm aiming aim for the cheaper rook f7, but it doesn't really matter. Rook g8 threatening mate. And I resign here at move 39. So anyway, I, I don't think I was that I wasn't really that gutsy at all. It was just an interesting experience to play a grandmaster in uh, the North Circular League. The highest I've played before is is our IMs. And I actually did take down an IM once in the North Circular League. But yeah, this this was the strongest opponent by far. That I've played, um, but Lauren de Costa is also super strong. I am, and I do have a game with him I haven't yet covered. I should cover that soon uh, as well. That was from like over a year ago, so that that would be interesting to cover. But um, yeah, I mean, I think um, if there's any conclusions from this game, I think if you're playing a GM, once it goes downhill, it goes downhill. You can kind of assume that, but until that point. If if you're like razor sharp like a hawk, there, there are opportunities on the chessboard just waiting to be uh, 
tapped into. So the big one, uh, the pawn sack might not have been so bad if it had the, a very accurate follow-up. So I needed to get into his Achilles heel. Recognising the opponent's Achilles heel uh, and trying to do whatever subtle moves and resources to exploit that. Uh, so here, yeah, I was just and unfortunately attracted to a routine move underestimating b5 which this knight was killed so yeah this one is very very it's still an interesting game position here if f takes here knight c5 as an example it's still an interesting game i can recapture that pawn and it doesn't really matter being a pawn down here according to uh from an engine point of view and and if you just look this is much better than the game i've got access to his um achilles hell so yeah i don't really know uh if this game's instructive to anyone, it was it was just interesting for me to play this uh, very, very strong GM. Very, very nice post mortem analysis. I've got two of his favorite games to cover. I asked him two of his favorite games. One was against Marin and another against Conquest. So you might be seeing those on the channel soon. Uh, I think the team did well. We got two and a half points and from in the eight board match considering they bought two gms and a raft of other very strong players i think we did really well last night so congratulations to uh, team muzzle hill last night okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much